Hi and welcome to this quick training video on Boardmaker Online which is now available from Spectrix. So if you're ready to ditch that Boardmaker CD for good but keep using the program that you know and love then maybe Boardmaker Online is for you. Maybe you already have Boardmaker Online and you just want a little bit of extra information about how to use it then that's why you've come here today to look at this training video. My name is Amanda Hartman, I'm a speech pathologist and one of the consultants here at Spectronix and yes it is true, I am the self-proclaimed queen of Boardmaker around here so it's my job to welcome you and say good day here from Australia and bring to you this series of quick videos that can tell you a little bit more about Boardmaker Online. So these training videos will cover a variety of topics so enjoy! Okay, so this training video is a kind of exciting one, something that's new that we couldn't do with Boardmaker before but that we can now do now that we have Boardmaker online. And this is its interactivity with your iPad. Now, any activities that you make on Boardmaker online can actually be loaded to your iPad for your students to use interactively um, in your classrooms. So this is a really exciting development. You cannot use your iPad, to be clear, to create activities. So there's no online editing kind of or editing creation tool within the iPad platform. It is simply becomes a player. So um, basically, you need to uh, watch this video and you can see how that can work. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to go into Boardmaker Online and have a look at a couple of things there that we need to do. And then we're going to flip over to the iPad to see how it looks when we are looking at our iPad screen. So let's do that now. Okay, so I'm in my Boardmaker account. I've logged in and if I go to my Boardmaker account, basically I can see all of my activities are here that I have. I have them in folders so I can access any of these activities when I log into my iPad. The other thing that you might look at is student management. And there's a couple of things that you might need to note. So first of all, let's have a look, say for example, at this student here called Baza Blue. Now, um, first of all, what you might need to take note of is that uh, he has his own student ID, but he has his own username, which is his first name and, a, and the first initial of his surname. And then his password is just password. So this is when I added that student for the first time, we set that up. So you need to know his username and password for when you go over to I, the iPad, because he has to log in it as this person with this username and password so that he can access the um, activities that you have assigned to him. So these are the tasks that have been assigned to him. We can see that now. So we're going to track Baza Blue just a little bit closer. But before we do that, I'm going to go back to my board maker because there's one other activity that um, I've put together that I think would be a good one for um, Baza. So and it's this this in at in rhyme sort. Okay, so basically what I'm going to do is I am going to, of all these little orange tabs here, I'm going to assign this activity and I'm going to assign it just this time to Baza Blue. Assign that. Okay, so now that file has been assigned to Baza. So another thing that you might do when you're a teacher is you might create what's called a playlist. And this is basically putting the activities that you want to run as a whole class activity onto your playlist and your playlist will show on in your Boardmaker Online account. So we're just going to assign an activity to the playlist and then we'll be able to see that over on the iPad. So we might just pick a random literacy activity from our CVC, our CVC Word Builder and basically of all these little buttons along the side here um, I have editing but I do have a button here that says add to playlist so I click add to playlist and now that's just going to be have been added to my playlist. So now when I'm on my iPad that activity will actually show up on my playlist. So. I know my students and my student knows his, um, his login, username and password. The other bit of information that I have to get off here is what my code is so that the iPad, when I go into my iPad, so that it allows me to link in 
to the correct account because I have a unique code. So I go up here to Amanda up into this top right hand corner and I do the drop down arrow and I go down into my account. Now my my account basically has my profile information, my password, but I also have this thing for student access. And now you're looking at what is the custom web address. So if I did have students that were logging in and they were logging in on, um, on a different web browser, on a computer somewhere else, this is what we could send to them. So we can copy and paste that to send them and then they can log in. But I actually have this account ID here and that's over on this side here and that is the code that I need to get on a piece of paper and write down so if you've got this you need to write down that code because that's what you'll need when you're over on your iPad all right and there are some uh, there's more you'll have to watch more training videos about how we access how we um, let students access their activities at home and set up with parents and stuff so we're not going to cover that today we're just going to cover the typical classroom sort of environment okay so I'm all set up now I've got my activities we're going to go over to the iPad now and see um, how we can access these activities to play because I've done some creation I'm all set I'm ready to go I'm about to start my lesson so let's go and have a look at the iPad okay so you're looking at my iPad screen now and the first thing you'll have to do of course is download the app so go into your app store you can do a search for board maker and you'll find this app, which is the Boardmaker Student Center. This is a free app, and so you can just download it onto your iPad. Okay, so that's all set there. There's all the details and information about it. You can see I've already downloaded mine, so let's go ahead and open it. So I've just installed the app, and the first thing I have to do is to set up the app, I need to enter that unique ID number. Remember we found that in my account settings open that top corner when we're on Boardmaker Online and I said to you hey guys write it down. So this is the point now when you'll need to use that. So just give me two seconds I'm going to enter mine in now. Okay so I entered it in and then I'm at this opening window. So then you're presented with the choice of whether you're a student or, a, or whether you're the instructor or the teacher or the parent. So let's log in as Baza Blue first just so that we can see how that looks. So I'm going to link there. Now the first thing I want to point out is that it does kind of have a different crazy keyboard. It doesn't use the Apple keyboard. Um, I'm not sure why that is but that's just what it is. So the first line is the username. So I don't know if you can see but I have to type down on the black keyboard and it goes into a little text field just above and when I want to send that up to the field I push the OK button and it sends it up into the username field and then the second field is part is the password and as we know my password is password so I'm going to type that in and then say OK and it sent it up there and now I can click the sign in button so it is an unusual keyboard, you'll just have to get used to that. You don't have to use it too much. Okay, so first of all, you can see some of the activities are there. Now this is requiring the internet right now. You can see the first one, the at in rhyme sort, that's the one I just assigned to Baza Blue just a few minutes ago. And it is now with the blue bar, you can see that is now downloading. That requires the internet to happen, okay, to download that. However, once the activity is downloaded into Baz's Blues, I can then walk out of Wi-Fi range and the activity will still work. Okay, so now we've got all of his activities and basically I can just push the button and now um, I can just do the activity. So we're going to find words that rhyme with at or words that rhyme with in. So That's right, sad belongs in at words. Okay, so I can That's just right. drag Cat all the on. words in. I'm a very good rhymer, clearly. I'll just do it quickly. Okay. That's right. When belongs in, in words. Good job. You sorted them all. Thanks. So what's happened here is that that's been that's Baz's performance on that has been recorded. How long it took him to do it, um, and and whether he got it right or not. Now I only end of this activity. I only have one activity here, so I just push exit and I go back to my assignments. So you can basically just set things up of activities that you want Baza to do um, for a particular lesson.
and we can edit and change all of that. There's another one I loaded in that. So this is just a, a shared reading experience. The cat is on the bed. And then Barry Bazza might have a chance to read it. The cat it. is on the bed. And he can we open cat. up the symbols and check out the different words. And next page. The cat is in the box. Okay. The monkey is on the box. So basically, we can just have a shared reading of that of that book. So what that would you like to? Okay. So what I've done there is I've actually logged in as Bazza B with the password password and I'm doing the activities that I want. However, I just want to log out now and then we're going to log back in. So this time I'll log back in as the instructor. So again, I'm going to get that unusual keyboard, but I'm just going to use my username. I'm going to type that in. Amanda. And it's going to announce me. Okay, so I've got my username in there now, and now I'm going to just enter in my password. And I'm going to sign in. Okay, so now as an instructor, as the teacher, now I actually can see all of my students and all of the activities that I've created for each of the students. So yeah, I can go into Baz's account again, but also if um, Baz has finished his work and I need to give the iPad to someone else, I can now give it to someone else. So let's go and have a see what Olivia Orange has been lined up to do today. And you can see when I go into her account, you can see which activities have been allocated to her. Um, she's only got one activity, a word builder activity assigned to her and you can see it's requiring the internet because it's downloading that to her account because it's the first time I've opened up her account on the iPad. And once the activity is there, wait for it to download, she can then play that activity. Now she's got space for more assignments or more activities in there but it looks as if she only has one activity assigned to her right now. Okay, so that's now downloaded. Let's play it. And basically, we're just trying to make words here. M. A. T. You build the word. Matt. So, a really, a really uh, great activity. C. A. T. Check it out. You build the word. Cat. Okay. So, we, we looked, I think we looked at this activity recently. Um... And let's push sound it out. So it'll even do the sounding out for me as well. So let's check that. Yep, I think that's a real word. So if you need to do a check, you can sound it out. Okay, so let's stop that activity. And yes, I'm sure I want to exit. Now, because I've given this to Olivia, she's in here. She's having to do that activity. Um, to get out of it, I have a couple of different things. Um, I just want to point out for individual students, I can change their user, user settings. And this is where I might go and change their access method. Um, whether they are doing scanning or touch in to touch exit and the simple, even the simple touch, if I click into the settings there, I have some um, different things with the scroll bar I've got that turned off at the moment but I can have it smaller I can have it large so let's put that on and also if I need any auditory cues and whatever so let's just put that in I also have the text to speak so I can choose which voice is giving me and the interface settings again it just tells me um, a few of the bits and pieces in there about um, the toolbar and passwords and stuff using symbols all that sort of thing. Anyway, we'll just leave that for now. And um, so here we are. We're back on her page. That's That was there. We've got, we can also log out from here. But more probably more likely is, is where you would push out up in the top left-hand corner to go back to your teacher page to pick another student. Now the students can't do this. They can't get out of this page because they will need to then enter in your passcode um, to get back into here. So put that up into there and say OK. And now I'm back here. So now um, Olivia's finished. Now I can give it over to Shazza and Shazza can do her activities. OK. She only has one book to read. So off she goes. She can do that. That's already been downloaded. OK. I'm going to quickly go out of Shazza's account here. 
put my passcode back in again. And I want to show you one last thing. So we looked at how we had assigned activities to each of those students and we looked at them. If I actually click on my own profile picture there on me, Amanda Hartman at the top, what that actually loads is that playlist. And you can see the playlists, um, the, the CVC World Builder one, which is the one that we just added. Um, you can see that's um, attempting to download now. So again, when those activities are on your playlist, they will have to download onto your iPad in the Wi-Fi. But once they're on there, they don't need internet to be played. So if I've got put together a collection of my favorite activities or um, activities that I need for a particular lesson and I've put them onto my playlist, then that's where they will come up here and I can have a look at them. I push my little head button up the top there, it takes me back to the activities for individual students. But if I want to look at my playlist there, I've um, added a few different activities for a particular um, class lesson that I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to do with students. So you can see they're busy downloading, we won't wait for that to, to do. But uh, that's where they'd show up and where I would play them for from um, if I was doing like a whole class or a group activity. So that's pretty easy to do as well. All right, so basically that's how easy it is. So anything cool and groovy and awesome that you have made in Boardmaker Online, you can now put on to the iPad. Now, I don't know about you, but I can already feel the relief in my hands from, from all that anticipated laminating and cutting out and Velcroing I was going to have to do. My hands realize now that not only have I saved paper, I've saved myself lots of resource preparation time by being able to do this the high-tech way. There's nothing wrong with the low-tech way and I would encourage you that it's still okay to have printed board maker materials in your classrooms. But Boardmaker Online now takes it to a whole other level because what we have when we take it to technology is we have that interactivity that we didn't have from just print-based activities in some ways. We've got the text-to-speech, we've got the additional um, accessibility supports, we've got the... Um, the interactivity with the click and drag activities to do sorting and organizing things. So there's lots of other benefits to sending to for linking up those activities that you're doing over onto your iPad. And I think that um, this will be really exciting for lots of people who are using Boardmaker Online to be able to use it with their iPad. This is just an added benefit feature. It's fantastic. So we're going to quickly, quickly, quickly go back over because I just want to show you one last thing back at Boardmaker Online. Okay, so here I am back at Boardmaker Online. I'm going to go into my students again, my student management. And I'm just going to quickly, I'm going to click firstly on Olivia Orange. Now, we can see the activity that she did. So let's click now. So this was the assignment. This was the word builder we just did. Let's click the progress button. And basically you can see here that, um, it, now this is a, what they call a non-scored activity. But we can actually see that Olivia played the game for one minute of duration. Okay, so that's not bad. At least we are seeing um, what she did. We can also see what words she made. Okay, so all of a sudden the activity that we did we've now got instant data. We've got the date, we've got the duration, and we've got the words that she was able to create. Fantastic data. Okay, let's go at, um, go back one level and go to Baza, because Baza was the other student that we logged in as, and he had a lot more assignments. So let's have a look at his progress so far. So you can see um, he has done some non-scored activities. Obviously, he was just reading some activities and the dates that he did them. Um, but let's have a look. He did. He got 100% on this activity here. So let's click on it and let's see what details we got. So basically, he did the activity. It only took him a minute to do it. He did get 10 out of 10 and he had auditory feedback to help him. And you can see there that um, his answers are recorded there. Okay, and then he got them right. But I think the one that we demonstrated was, oops, sorry, went out to one level too many. 
So click on Baza Blue, click on Progress. Let's look at his at in rhyme sort. So again, it just has the information there and it can show you which ones he got correct. Okay? So basically, I think that um, automatically we've been, we're starting to collect lots of information about how the student has performed on an activity. So this is just an added feature. So it's cool enough that we can actually, um, let's say, you know, we can, we can put our cool activities that we've done in Boardmaker onto our iPad. That's good enough. But the added bonus is how we can track progress. And that's in particular, if we look at our, our activities, remember that we're looking at those activities that have the P on the screen. So this activity here is just a print base or a paper-based activity. It's just a plain board. However, if you have a screen, it means that it's an interactive activity. So say, for example, in my books and stories, you can see that my in on example is a interactive activity. So it's made specifically for, for going on the computer. The little paper one there, that's basically is a print activity. And if you go back, if you have the computer screen with the P in it, that's one of those performance enabled activities. And that's where it will actually record, um, take data um, and responses so we can grade the or measure the child's performance on it. So that was just a quick tip on there. So do it. Boardmaker Online, put it on your iPad. How exciting is that? Fantastic. Thanks for watching and I look forward to sharing more about Boardmaker Online with you soon. Bye now.